Hello, everyone. My name is Bob Cease, and I will be your moderator. Today's topic, 2020 Vision, the Future of the CIO. Before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. All participants will be muted. Please use the chat window for any questions. We will try to answer all of your questions today, or we will follow up with an email. Recordings of today's webinar will be available in a few days. We also welcome and encourage your tweets at hashtag servitization. Now, please allow me to introduce today's facilitators. First is Sophia Abramovitz. Sophia is the CEO of Norton Enterprises International. She brings over 30 years of experience in high tech as a program executive for Fortune 500 companies. Rich Brayen has over 30 years experience working for Fortune 500 companies in the information technology industry. He has worked in a wide variety of senior financial roles and has partnered with CIOs to help them prioritize and manage their IT investments to grow shareholder value. Jeff Richards leads the CIO professional services team. He is an inspirational leader with the ability to develop big picture strategy, then drive it down to executable tactics for implementation. Clients and employers have ranged from small startups to Fortune 100 companies. A consistent hallmark has been a need for a significant transformation strategy to be envisioned, then executed. Among other client responsibilities, Jeff is currently serving as an interim CIO of the YMCA of Silicon Valley, where they are transforming the business enabled by complete replacement of the software applications suite. Rocky Vienna specializes in high visibility IT and business process transformational engagements. Rocky leads companies through organizational and operational turnaround programs that results in new levels of performance and competitiveness. Jennifer Vessels, the CEO of our sponsor, Next Step, brings over 30 years global management experience. Next Step, which Jennifer founded in 1997, maximizes results for clients needing to grow, expand, or transform to achieve greater market value. Jennifer will now introduce today's session. Thank you and welcome. Over the past few years, we have seen an exponential growth in the amount of change and transformation within all of our clients across all industries. This is both in the workforce, as more millennials come into the workforce, as more opportunities are made available for people in a global capacity, and more diversity as well as more technology is driving a much richer workforce today. Technology is also transforming and in many ways disrupting the way business is done. When we think about the very fast growth of cloud storage that allows people to work anywhere with any device at any time, the growth of social media, and the big data analytics to really analyze and understand what social media is telling us about customer experience. These are all factors that are driving significant change and in some cases significant challenge for companies across all businesses. So the world has indeed changed, businesses are changing, and we believe in order to remain competitive, sustainable and profitable, companies across the board in industries need to continue looking for ways to remain leading edge, implementing and using technology in the workforce of the future in order to be competitive. According to Forrester, in another two and a half years, by 2018, three of the top 20 organizations in any industry will be completely replaced, obliterated by a competitor that they are unaware of today. You may ask, why is this and how could this be possible? Today, companies can start very quickly with extremely limited capital investment 
and can scale and grow on a global basis through social, through mobile, through cloud. Think in terms of Uber and how quickly a concept of ride sharing has, in many cases, displaced traditional taxi services, air to B2B, to B, and the impact they are having on hotels. So in each industry, there can be fast upstarts that can come to, to really knock the key competitors that have been there for quite some time if the stayed companies remain stayed and do not change and transform. So business executives need to really think about what is going to drive their business into the future and how can they leverage technology, leverage people to stay leading edge and on the head of the curve in their own market and in their own industry. In fact, this study from DCS in Europe notes that 64% of C-level executives cite that business transformation and organizational change is their top issue, whether it's the CFO, CMO, COO, or the CIO, they all recognize that the world is changing and they have to be on top of it with a strategy and a plan to adapt. Much of this change can be attributed to technology and can be driven by technology. So the CIO in particular is in a critical place where they must change. And they recognize that. In this study from IDC, 54% of CIOs actually recognized and, and agreed that their IT organization was at risk of being displaced by something completely different by 2016 in only two years. You may ask, what would replace an IT organization? It could be outsourced capabilities, or in many cases, it could be a combination of as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, or the line of business executives simply using their credit card operating expenses, going directly to Amazon Web Services or others. So our purpose in the session today is to really share with you some of the suggestions, ideas, and methods that CIOs, we believe, can transform to a leadership role and take influence in changing the business into the future. And so to begin walking us through this new paradigm, I will pass over to Rocky. Good morning. So we see that the CIO is becoming more of a service broker and a strategic business enabler. Let's explore some of the areas of responsibility and how they've changed. The old operating model for the CIO and IT in general was one of command and control. Desktops were locked down, mobile phones were company supplied, applications were under very strict change management, the focus on budget management was cost control. So the overall approach of most CIOs was one of minimizing change and controlling technology, and in the process, picking up the dubious distinction of being the CI no. In the new paradigm, the CIO must transition to become more of a service broker. The keys here are to be more agile, flexible, scalable, and mobile. Desktop support moves to a self-service model. In the areas of mobile devices, IT must be able to support bring your own device. But this goes beyond just allowing employees to use their own devices. It includes using that device as a vehicle for information services. Application management moves to a rules-based service model. And the budget focus is now about elasticity based on business needs and growth cycles. Generally, we see the CIO focus moving from technology control to business enablement. The CIO must know more about business operations than almost anyone else in the enterprise. Done right, the CIO's career path can move from CIO to COO. Part of what 
is allowing the new focus is a transition of enterprise-owned data centers toward a hybrid mix of private and public clouds, along with pay-as-you-consume hyperscaling capabilities of modern cloud infrastructure. Plus, we are seeing a continual adoption of more software-as-a-service applications for the enterprise. According to Gartner, there will be a tipping point around the year 2020 when infrastructure is almost all commodity. Another area that we see shifting is the repatriation of computing and support services that used to be outsourced. Companies started re-rationalizing their outsourcing models a few years ago and have begun repatriating computing and service assets as they redesign their enterprise architecture. As they did that, they analyzed how to treat core competency and high-risk assets, and the result is a private-public cloud hybrid model. Within the private cloud, we would expect to see more high-risk offerings because security of the cloud environment is critical including the network used to obtain access uh, needs to be more secure as well. In the public cloud, we might see lower risk assets like platform as a service and other data services. The combination of outsourced, on-premise, and private public cloud computing resources give IT faster time to deploy, cheaper scalability, and better elasticity and cost. And this also fits well with our new mantra of being flexible, agile, responsive, and mobile. I believe we can summarize the evolution of the IT business model with these eras, craftsmanship, industrialization, and digitalization, or build it, standardize it, and extend it. The craftsmanship era was when IT operated in a bits and bytes silo with little or no connection to the business they were supporting. A lot of their time and energy was spent on just getting the technology to work with the minimal computing resources that were available to them. The industrial era saw IT organizations focusing on standardization of not only technology tools, but also creating service management, service management models the, and the most well-known of, the, of these is ITSM, or Information Technology Services Management. It was also figuring out how to work more closely with their customers and uh, also some significant uh, advantages in terms of efficiency and effectiveness were a result of that. The current step in the evolution is digitalization. Here we are seeing extending the delivery of these services through digital innovation and collaborative engagement. The new types of value, like disruptive innovation, can be seen in the new collaborative economy with companies like Uber and Airbnb. Here is the first of two polls in our webinar today. Our audience today is composed of both IT and non-IT professionals, so please select three of the areas where you expect IT to spend their time over the next three years. Once you've made your selection, please click on the Submit button. And feel free to add questions to, to our panelists here in the chat box. Bob, do we have any questions that have come in so far? Yes, we do. While our participants are taking a few moments to answer our poll, let me summarize a question for our facilitators that our audience has submitted. Can you provide a few more details or examples of what you mean by new types of value? Well, let's step back. This is Jeff. Uh, let's step back just a little bit further. I mean, what uh, – so the evolution that Rocky just laid out here, there's a there's a quote from one of the uh, Intel board members. I can't remember whether it was uh, David Potrock or James Plummer last year that said, if IT is mediocre, then Intel will be mediocre. If IT is excellent, then Intel will have a foundation upon which to become excellent. So 
the new kinds of value. I mean, the shop horn joke of the CIO standing for chief introvert officer and sitting in the engine room waiting for the call for more power, Scotty, has, has gone away. And in the middle uh, column of uh, Rocky's table of evolution there, it talked about getting some standardizations and some, you know, some, some rigor and repeatability. Most of the large shops are still in that phase, but now they're being asked to jump the curve while they're still, you know, trying to shore up the foundations. So the, the new types of value are getting closer to the revenue stream. We talked about Airbnb and Uber recently. I mean, look at Twitter. Look at even just YouTube. The companies that are the most successful or will be in the future are those that can harness the single smallest quantum of, of human production whilst making those producers consumers at the same time, a la something like YouTube. We do have one other question. Aren't businesses incurring greater risk by putting so much of their business into the cloud? This is Rocky. I'll, I'll take that one. Um, so risk in the cloud. I, I believe that risk is, is managed from an enterprise point of view. So your, the, the risk analysis that you do now from a security point of view shouldn't change at all. You measure your assets, the value, the value they have to the, the enterprise, and the amount of risk you're willing to incur and uh, create a model based on that. So basically, if I had a high-risk um, as data asset, and let's say it might be credit card numbers and, and, uh, and customer names, um, I would be more likely to put that in a private cloud than a public cloud, personally. Uh, public cloud I would use for more benign or, or low-risk uh, data sets and applications. Great. It looks like we have uh, results from the poll that have come in, and the number one area which we our team sees as priorities is business process enablement. That was the highest by our audience, followed very closely by big data analytics, which if I make an assumption, one of the business processes you're looking to enable is customer experience, sales, marketing, being able to really mine the data on what your, what your customers are doing and provide that back to the business. Those two were followed by application development and security and compliance, all of which we will be touching on as we uh, carry forward here. And I will turn over to Sophia. Good morning. I'd like to take a minute to perhaps drill down into some of the technology we've been talking about. And let's start with talking about legacy technology. Um, we're moving very quickly from legacy technology that is being augmented or enhanced by much of the new technology, which is also being driven by customer expectations um, and helping to accelerate, some would say, the absolute requirement for change. And that's being driven immediately by something we're all familiar with, often called SMAC. And according to the analyst data, SMAC, that is the use of social media, mobile devices, analytics from big data, and the ubiquitous cloud are in already enabling new business models as we've touched on, everything from as a service to the Internet of Things. According to a Gartner report from February of this year, within the next 15 years, we will see even more change as something called smart technologies become as ubiquitous as the cloud. Many of us believe that smart technologies have already gained traction and are now gaining momentum. So what is this technology called SMART? It starts with sensor networks, which, when coupled with cloud technology, actually enable and enhance the Internet of Things. This technology includes many of the things that you can already manage with your mobile devices, such as remotely turning on the lights at your home or the oven in your kitchen. Um, the next is maker machines. 
Um, I think the most obvious instance of that with which we are already becoming familiar is 3D printing technology. Maker machines will grow as that technology becomes far more widely adapted within industry. The next augmentation of humans includes wearable devices and embedded devices, and it has a lot to do with the growing exploration of neurological and psychological enhancements of human capabilities. Um, think about the, where your watch is going. And that helps explain the augmentation of humans. Finally, we have robotics, which includes simple industrial warehouse robots and the current generation of autonomous devices that would include vehicles. Last but not least, thinking machines, such as the intelligent systems epitomized by Apple, Siri, and IBM's Watson, which are steadily advancing the ability of technology to support and even make decisions based on complete discovery and evaluation of relevant information. With all this new technology, we're still worried about and addressing regulatory security and privacy issues, and that will remain the same. However, changing how we do business as we become, all of us, digital businesses, presents some interesting challenges. For CIOs and members of the C-suite, it really is a question of, are we ready for the changes that are coming? What we're seeing, according to the analysts, is that about two-thirds of company executives believe that they have a digital strategy. But surveys indicate that there are significant challenges to implementing that strategy. Only 21% of executives believe they have the right people to define the digital strategy. And even less, only 15% believe that their staff have the right skills to execute. Now, only 19% of executives believe they have the right technology. and a minuscule 14% believe they have the right processes. So what does that mean to, in particular, CIOs and IT, but also to other executives? It means that the challenge is really in relationship. According to our data, investment is available, and organizations understand that they must invest in this new technology. The question becomes, who do you invest with? For example, with the new technology, software as a service, as a prime example, budget can move to the lines of business, to the chief marketing officer, and LOBs are no longer dependent on IT for technology. They can source technology from service providers and bypass IT entirely. As Jennifer reported earlier, 54% of CIOs believe their IT organizations will be replaced with different constructs. One of the reasons may be that CIOs have relationship challenges within and without their organization. Only 42% of CIOs report having a very good relationship with their CEO. Only a third say they have a very good relationship with external vendors. And less than 16% have very good relationships with customers. The impact is that there is a perception gap between what CIOs want to do, think they can do, and what the rest of the business believes. And we absolutely see this as an opportunity as the organization from the CEO through line of business and all of the employees in the organization really look to and need technology to support their growth. It's a question, though, of how the IT organization can build the perception, build the relationships, build the skills, and then actually execute to be an integral part of the business. In another study, which was conducted by IDC, 
this really looked at the perceptions again of the CIO and the IT leaders in the organization compared to the perceptions of the line of business, i.e. the CMO, the director of marketing, director of finance. And it looked at it across three different perspectives. We can see here, first of all, that the CIO and the IT organization saw their their skills as being much higher than their, their customer counterparts. Um, in addition, if we break it down where we see this first criteria, it was really looking at the skills. So IT believes they have stronger skills to take the organization into a digital future than line of business, i.e. their customers. The second question is really around alignment. IT believes they are better aligned with their internal customers than the customers are. And probably most importantly and most scarily in, in many cases is the CIO and the IT organization, about 63% believe that they are involved and have a strategic role in the business decisions of the company, whereas only about 45% of the people making those business decisions, i.e. line of business, believe the IT organization is strategically involved. Therein lies the opportunity is for the IT organization to, number one, determine where they are missing skills, where they are missing business acumen, and then in building those skills and capabilities, begin to build the perception with their customers, i.e. line of business and external folks, that they have that capability. And so it's really a question going forward of the opportunity for the CIO and his team to partner and to, to learn to speak business, to learn to think about business processes and competitiveness and productivity of the organization and how the technology can support that, as well as building the relationships so that they are the first place that a CMO looks for how do we move forward with data analytics to better understand our customers? Or is the first call the sales VP makes when understanding what do we need to do to better generate leads and understand where the customers and the market is going? So the CIO and IT need to be the business process owners, not just implementers, but owning and driving those processes we believe they need to really act as account managers with somebody in IT aligned with each of the departments of the company and being a liaison and a business unit executive and partnering with the different departments to allow the CIO to have the, the knowledge, the capability, the credibility, and the perception that they're truly at that C-suite. That's what will allow IT and the CIO to move closer to the revenue stream and provide insight, whether it's with big data, whether it's with financials, but really be part of that strategic competitive advantage. So as we were saying, um, it's really up for, I mean, this is a two-way street. As Rocky pointed out earlier on the, we've got several people on the call who are not uh, IT executives, but are also sales and marketing executives. And and while I, I made the joke about being the chief introvert officer earlier, it's a two-way street that any relationship has two parties, right? We talked about it, it's all about relationships, there's communication. This is, it's not rocket sciences, but throw, if you're the VP of marketing and you're looking at, at laying out some money for uh, uh, an AWS implementation, or there's a VP sales and looking at laying out some money for uh, some Salesforce licenses, why would you do that on your own? You know, collaborate with the people who do that as a core business. I mean, fundamentally, both parties have to reach out to one another. And as we said, the 
the CIO who, if you look at it, if you want to be the CFO of an organization, you have to know how to deal with the street, you don't have to deal with the analysts, you have to deal with uh, the board, you have to know your taxation situation, you have to know general accounting inside and out. To be the CIO, you either came up for the app stack or the op stack and you were the right place at the right time. There is no prescriptive list. So there's, there, there's an education gap in a lot of cases for a senior IT executive. So it, it's really a learning experience. And there's a, there's a white paper on our website about the language secrets of successful CIOs, and we'll make sure all the registrants today get a copy. But the bottom line is the closer you get to the revenue stream, the better off you'll be because unless you, if you're a cost center, you're just going to be continually under pressure. If you're a revenue center, you're going to get care and nurturing. Hello, everyone. This is Rich Brain speaking. Over the next few slides, I'll talk in more depth about how the CIO can become more engaged with the business. I'll start with this more traditional view of the IT function. Each of these columns, sometimes referred to as towers, represents the IT services that are found within the CIO organization. These service towers often determine the structure of the IT organization and at times can be somewhat siloed. From left to right, these services can include in-house staffing, application development, infrastructure, licensing, maintenance, services, and security. Each of these services consumes resources. In effect, people, equipment, or vendor services that the CIO must select and prioritize within an IT budget that is typically constrained. I think it is important to remember that one of the primary CIO missions is to automate business processes. This automation creates value for the business by increasing the efficiency of the process workflow, translating data into information, and by reducing manual errors. As an example, CRM, or Customer Relationship Management, is displayed horizontally here as it will consume resources from many or perhaps all of the vertical services. Each of the intersection points on this matrix should be managed to optimize resource levels and provide an understanding of the IT total cost of ownership. Of course, life would be simpler if there was just one business process. As you know, there are many business processes that drive an enterprise. The major ones are displayed here. Each of these processes runs horizontally across the enterprise and competes for the CIO's time and resources. Jeff and Jennifer talked earlier about how the CIO must learn to speak business. And you can see here how the CIO is uniquely positioned to influence each of the business processes across the enterprise. Each business process can be optimized by partnering with the business process owner and company stakeholders to better understand their requirements and day-to-day -day business challenges. To be more engaged in the business, the objective is to spend less time managing the verticals and more time collaborating on the horizontals. Today, there are many software-as-a-service solutions that not only offer more of a turnkey solution but can also provide best practices and business processes. By achieving best practices in the business processes, a company can achieve competitive advantage. The CIO is well situated to influence this by selecting and leveraging the right technologies. Business processes can be external facing, back office, or a combination of both. The CIO can go beyond optimizing each individual process by linking them end-to-end -end throughout the customer lifecycle experience. Ideally, shown here, linking CRM to quote to cash, then perhaps triggering supply chain and supplier interfaces for inventory delivery and replenishment. Then once fulfilled, adding customer support linked to development for level three support and feedback. And finally, linking human resource requirements to hire to retire all with links to the financial ledger and record to report. Automating the handoffs between each process can provide a real advantage in speed, business information, and efficiency. Increasingly, in today's environment, there is a need to go a step further to securely integrate business processes into mobile devices and social media applications. Done correctly, 
Value can be realized through business process excellence in both top line and bottom line financials, which increases shareholder value. A few examples include better lead generation, sales tools, time to market, ease of doing business, and improved customer support. Okay, at this time, I think we're ready for the next audience polling question. Again, in just a moment, you will see the poll questions on your screens. Please remember to submit your answers after you've made your choices. Okay, so you can see Why? the question. So the Go question ahead, here is, what do you see as the top three priorities? I'm sorry. What are the top three challenges you see in the IT organizations over the next two years? Now, while you take a couple of moments to answer the poll, we have a couple more questions for our facilitators. First, can you elaborate on disruptive innovation technology? Well, from a disruptive innovation technology, when you think about it, it's, um, you know, we, we've used the Airbnb and the Uber uh, example to death, but there's, there's other uh, technology similar to that, but the, the key to that that I didn't, really pick up on in the, in the last time I gave an answer on this is that those technologies are limited, their introduction is limited by IT development lead time. So when you think about, okay, great, let's uh, let's do a, uh, I don't know, let's start using Meltwater so we can see what our uh, social media feeds are and what, what, our, what our hits are going on out there. Oh, great. How do I integrate that into my technology stack? Well, you know, that's, that's why the marketing people need the IT people because they may have a great idea, but it's still got to be instantiated into the architecture. Another example from a Next Step client is with our client Adobe, that in the past you would think of Adobe's products of Photoshop and InDesign, something a designer would fit and, and use at some form of a desktop or even a tablet or a laptop. Today, with Creative Cloud moving to more of a platform and the services that are provided, that designer that may have been limping along with, with as many skills as they could to crank things out can easily be displaced by a better person that is sitting in Germany on the other side of the planet that is able to interface with the client in real time, pulling information, pulling new fonts, pulling new photos, and doing this all via the cloud, which could either replace the original person or supplement and really build a global team doing a set of activities much quicker in a much more efficient manner than what one or two people may have done in an agency all of two years ago. I would add one other arena where we're seeing disruption in how we've done business for as long as most of us can remember, and that is education. Um, all of us are familiar with education in a classroom or at a training center as adults, but today we expect on-demand, self-paced learning, which we can access anytime, anywhere, from any device, and that is totally changing, disrupting the way that training is delivered, whether it's academic training or it's business training. Um, and that for the instructors or the trainers means they have to adopt because their customers are demanding it. And the people in what I'll call the education business are forced to change because their customers can no longer afford to take a week to go across the planet to get trained, to be out of the field for a week while they're taking uh, technical or sales training. So there really is a huge paradigm shift, and that's just yet one more example where an entire vertical uh, business is being forced to change because customers are demanding it as well as the new technologies enabling it. Are there any other questions, Bob? Yes, I have a couple more I was hoping we had some time for. Uh, does supporting business processes help CIOs avoid support for organizational silos or just reinforce them? 
Well, and so stepping back a little bit, IT is is really at the derm center. They've got their tentacles extended into all parts of the operation. So they they've got a better cross organizational view than most or, than most parts of the other functions of the organization. So it's actually the enabler of a process view of an organization because you know process left unregulated will be changed for the convenience of the person who runs that process, not the people that that process is intended to serve. And so the the ins and outs of a process and its uh, constituents is something that, that IT is the enabler of. One last question. With so many of the tools provided by SaaS providers, how does a CIO motivate his team to be innovative? This is Rocky. I'll take that one. Um, so in my experience, nothing motivates a team more than inspire leadership. So as a leader, you know, embrace the changes ahead of you and be excited about the road ahead. Now, when you're dealing with your in individual team members, when it comes time to do some coaching um, or your annual reviews, when you're coaching them, take a look at new technical skills that, are, that, that you need to, to fill and make sure you have a training budget to allow your folks to, to up-level their, their skills to not only benefit them and excite them, but also to benefit the team and your abilities to, the, to deliver on these new technologies. And also motivate them to become sub subject matter experts in your business, because uh, that's how you're going to really start the conversations between the IT organization and your counterparts in the, in the business world. Isn't it fair to say, Rocky, that some of that training budget potentially would be allocated to business type skills and, and training around how technology is supporting the business? Absolutely. Absolutely. We see that as, as one of the motivating factors for IT. Yes. Well, it looks like we have the results of our poll in. And uh, interestingly, the, uh, the number one challenge that, that came in from our participants is enhancing relationships with lines of business. So it is recognized uh, by our attendees as well as all of the studies that there, there is room to grow there. And secondly is restructuring the IT department to improve the alignment with the new roles and responsibilities. So getting the right people, getting the right training, knowledge, and then building those relationships, which is great because we see that the real opportunity for the CIO and for the IT organization overall is, is one to take a, a center role and, and to be the center influencing and driving department within the organization. And to be able, through the relationships, understanding of business processes, to be the first person that the line of business executives consult with when determining company structure, work process, and flow of information, the business processes, how customer support and service can leverage big data and analytics and social media to stay on top of providing customer experience, to be addressed, addressing the needs of the field sales organization, whether that's lead generation, CRM, tracking of customer patterns, and are working very closely with marketing, which, by the way, one of the other studies we've seen, the CMO and the leader of marketing is actually predicted to hold at least half of the IT budget in another couple of years. So the CIO should really be partnering closely with that marketing person on how the, the technology budget can best be used to drive market and competitive advantage. And as organizations move to delivering their, their products as a service, the CIO as potentially the owner of the platform through which those services are going to be provided needs to be partnering very closely with and influencing the structure of the product design in working with product engineering and the R&D groups. So the CIO should influence the product roadmaps, 
and the continuous improvement on the scalability of the platforms for product deployment, the tools, internal, external, staff, and other providers selected by the lines of business, incubate and drive new ideas and really collaborate one-to-one -one with each of the lines of business, and be a key element in driving change, driving that alignment, and also driving a shift to the new mentality that will help the organization be among the 17 out of the top 20 that thrive in their particular industry in the future. So a huge opportunity for CIOs to really partner in delivering true customer service internally and externally to their partners and their customers. Picking up on that, one of the things we're clearly seeing is that the new technology is being driven by customers demanding that we provide a unique, personalized customer experience. And the technology, whether it's social media, competitive analysis, the Internet of Things, is providing enormous amounts of data, often called big data which allows us to understand customers' wants and needs far better than in the past. This raw data, when analyzed, provides business intelligence, which then enables improved customer experiences. By helping organizations to work with data and business intelligence, CIOs can help their organizations respond to the technology-empowered customers who demand 24-7 relationships. By developing strong partnerships with other members of the C-suite, CIOs can help develop strategies to enable introduction of new products and service solutions, drive agility and responsiveness through effective use of business intelligence, help create tools to support lead generation and to enhance customer experiences. CIOs at the forefront of technology and change can become agents of competitive advantage, move closer to the revenue stream, and demonstrate renewed relevance for IT organizations. But additional soft skills may be required to enhance relationship building. Um, some of the skills for the future, um, as identified in this survey run by Westgate, when hundreds of seasoned IT professionals were asked, highlighted three skills and attributes that were most worthwhile to focus on. They got a wide variety of answers, of course, but the three that really stand out were the top three. These soft skills, building business savvy, influencing others, and building relationships far out polled any of the harder skills. So again, this focus on relationship building is not only borne out by those of you on the call, but also by our research. So as you may remember when you uh, registered for this, uh, webinar, there was a, a survey that many of you responded to uh, that was asking some questions along the lines of what are the current top priorities and what do you think they will be in the future? So the, uh, well, it's an anecdotal survey because there's only a few dozen of you that, that responded. It's no great analysis, but it was, it echoed what we've been saying here that demonstrating the value to the enterprise, partnering with the business process owners with the high, the heavy hitters, and again, softer skills security and privacy, employee productivity, which were kind of basically the table stakes, the price of admission in 19, you've got to keep the organization secure and the data secure. Um, but the, the shift going forward what is that it was a more process-oriented business as far as uh, IT is concerned. Customer service and support, sales ops and field enablement, underlying that is a lot of self-service. I mean, if you think about it, 
earlier we were talking about what are disruptive technologies. You know, would you bank with anybody today that didn't offer you online banking services? Well, what they've really done is taken what was a big back office concentration of, of low-skilled labor and put it on the customers to do that and lower their cost model. But it, we see it as a great convenience. Well, you know, what other things in your business could you have? As I said, I'm at the, I'm at the YMCA of, of Silicon Valley as a CIO. One of the things we're doing is coming up with a large self-service model to get a lot of the paper out of our business. But it's something that our customers are asking for. So going forward, if we look at uh, the uh, Deloitte study on the similar lines, both 2013 to 2014 were the same within a couple of percentage points of supporting the new business needs, driving digital strategy. But I think the telling point on this survey is that reducing IT cost, which was the has been in the top 10 for years. I mean, IT budgets are constantly under pressure. It's actually gone from third place down to fourth place to less than a third now that, it, that, it, uh, that it's become a priority where strengthening security and risk management has, has grown from the standpoint of we've all seen the headlines. Uh, you know, Target's big exploit was a known vulnerability. It was not a, a cloud-based app that let them down. It was their, their hard shell soft center architecture that let them down. Um, but fundamentally, I think the point here is that uh, cost consciousness is being reduced. Again, you're freeing up money by virtue of moving to cloud providers. You're going from an OPEX model to a CAPEX model. So that's all great. So how do you do that? I mean, this is all this is all wonderful stuff, but it, it doesn't really explain, you know, how do I become a butterfly, right? So the issue is really, as Rocky talked about earlier, leadership of knowing where you want to go, figuring out how you're going to get there, pairing with the applications people, the business processes, and then from a change management perspective. And this is not the IT configuration-based change management. It's the people change management. Exactly. So we highly recommend starting with a commitment to change and recognizing that that may mean restructuring. It may mean retooling. It may mean, in some cases, bringing in new people and new ideas. But having that commitment and then really putting in place a strong plan for how you're going to retool your team, how you're going to structure the alignment between your team members within IT and the business, possibly even assigning one person from IT for each organization as an account manager to sit in on monthly staff meetings, to do budgeting, to do planning with those line of business executives. And that, over time, will become a standard part of the pairing between line of business and IT in defining the applications and the structure. And in doing so, continuing that change management process of skills, practice, tooling, and skills being things such as influencing, communicating, negotiating, and really understanding the, the base drivers of how to make the business more competitive. So in summary, business transformation is real. It has changed businesses and organizations. It will continue to do so over the next one, two, five years. And the IT organization is well suited to drive that change, but also will be driven through it. So where we are today is companies have moved to as a service. They are implementing social, mobile, analytics, and cloud. And we're starting to see it becoming more mainstream to really look at where the smart future lies, the sensors, the machine makers, the augmentation of, of human capabilities, robotics, and thinking machines. So change is real. And change does mean opportunity. So as we're, as we're wrapping up here, the CIO has basically got to affect the business outcomes. They can't be the, the engine room guys anymore. And I don't think that's uh, 
a grand revelation for many of you, but the question is how do you do that? So you do that by focusing more on solutions and less on technology. If someone brings you their cell phone and says, I'm having a problem getting my Outlook to work properly, don't answer the question. Send it downstream to one of your people. Don't be the techie. Align with the business process and value creation. You know, where do you make money to get the closer to the revenue stream, the more care and feeding there will be. If you're a cost center, you'll be under pressure. How can you help the rest of the company become more efficient? We talked about a lot of self-service models if you're in any consumer-based business, even from a support model. Um, the customer set. Well, I mentioned briefly Meltwater. I didn't really explain what that is. That's a, a subscription-based service that monitors 135 social media outlets for mentions of your brand, your product, or anything else. It's, it's relatively inexpensive. Start putting out the reconnaissance and the sensors out there for your people. Uh, ensure the competitive capability. I mean, CIOs, again, chief infrastructure officers don't network well, but they really should network both with their business peers as well as their IT peers at, at conferences and the like on, on the outside world. So w with that, I'd like to uh, just give you a brief description of us. You've met uh, three of our people today. Rich, former finance director. Uh, Rocky's a multiple-time CIO. Myself, a big four consulting partner, current CIO. We're basically, we're the been there, done that squad. We're, we're hands-on guys. Um, we're all veterans. We're all gray hair, no hair, <laughs> but we, but we, we have, we, we stay current. That's the key to the, the IT business. Is you have to stay current to stay relevant. These are the sorts of things we focus on from the standpoint of, you know, business IT alignment, strat sourcing, interim CIO IT work, and then project rescue, just helping people pull them out of a ditch. Sample client list, all referenceable, but we won't, we won't uh, make, look at the I chart. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Jennifer. Thank you. And for those that don't know, Next Step is a global consulting company, and we focus primarily on revenue growth, and revenue growth is achieved through all aspects of organizational change and transformation, whether it's helping in go-to-market for new products, whether it's transforming business process to drive marketing, sales productivity, channel productivity, and ensure that the IT organization has the skills and the capabilities to support that long-term growth. We are very practical focused, really driving for market value as well as revenue improvements, and we bring the attitude of accountability and commitment to get results, very deep level of experience, 17 years of the firm working um, across a wide variety of areas. We have a team of 40 experts, deep expertise in sales, marketing, organizational, and people growth. And again, we focus on real profitability and long-term sustainability for our clients. Bob, do we have any other questions that have come in in our last couple of minutes before we wrap up? Yes, we do have one more question from our participants. This person says, this all sounds great. What can we do right now to enable this transformation? Well, as I was talking to couple slides back about how do you do this. I mean, the first thing is get out of your office. Get away from the technology. You've got people you've hired to do these things. Let them do these things. You need to get out to see, to talk to your constituents. Um, we've got multi-billion dollar clients with huge tech stacks, and we still have to remind the SVP of IT to go talk to the SVP of, of marketing. Um, so it's it's all business is done on the back of personal relationships. So establish those relationships would be the first thing. The second thing is is neighbor with your fellow CIOs and IT execs to find out what they're doing, what they're using. I, I imagine most of you haven't heard of Meltwater before I mentioned it today. It's a great little sensor that you can make available to your marketing people. There's There's dozens of things like that out there. Talk to your peers. No CIO I know makes a buying decision without talking to peers anyway. Help, help yourself figure out what they're doing. Take advantage of other people's knowledge. And as you're doing that, seek out those opportunities for training and development for your IT staff in business skills and, and really work with the, the folks in your team 
to understand which ones want to grow in that area and are there particular areas within the business in which they have interest. If one of your folks loves marketing and, and social media and those kinds of things, assign him to be your point person working with the marketing group while getting him the skills in order to do that. And, and really build a foundation and a learning culture and a belief and a commitment that we will grow, we will change, and put your performance metrics, incentives, and objectives around those business acumen development opportunities while also continuing, of course, to, to support the, the existing needs in the area of technology. Well, as we conclude, Please take a few moments to complete our survey. You will receive a link to the recording of the session within the next week. And please feel free to forward it to others who can benefit from it. First, I want to thank Sophia, Jennifer, Jeff, Rich, and Rocky for their contributions today. And on behalf of our facilitators and hosts at Next Step, thanks to all of you for joining us for this webinar. It has been our pleasure to speak with you and we hope that you will plan to join us again for our future presentations. With that, thank you again, and we wish you all a very good day.